All right, guys. So welcome back. Now, in this lecture, we'll be understanding about how do we navigate the data inside the connection that we have made to the database. Over here, you can see I have two connections. That is one with AKS Golu schema and I have one HR schema, right? So what you need to do is if you just double click any connection. Now, first of all, it is trying to connect to the database with this connection information, whatever the username, password and other details you provided. So now when you see loading, that means it is connecting to the database. Now, whenever you connect to any database, can you see this little plug icon? I mean, earlier there was no plug. I mean, if you see this icon, this has changed because now we have connected to the database. And whenever you connect to a database, you will have a worksheet. This is, uh, we call it as worksheet. This is a SQL query running worksheet where you can run your SQL queries against the same database connection. Now, if you see and read the heading of this worksheet, it is the same as the connection name, HR at the rate test DB. So for me, because uh, this was the main reason I always say use this naming convention, uh, because if I'm running an SQL query against the database, by looking at this, I can understand, oh, I'm running as an HR user on test database. Uh, so some people, they give some vague connection names which actually confuses them when they are working on the database. All right, so let us come back to our connections tab. So if you pull it down like this, you can see these are all the different objects that you can have inside the database. Now you can see we have tables, we have views, uh, we have additional views, we have indexes, packages, procedures, functions, triggers, and lot of other database objects. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to navigate the tables inside this schema, that is the HR schema. So if you click on this plus button, you can see the different tables that are owned by the HR schema, right? So we have countries table, we have departments, employees, job history, jobs, locations, and regions table, okay? So if you click on any of the table, it will automatically open the table onto the right side. Now, can you see this tab is different and running the SQL, uh, this tab is different. So this is another view that is provided by SQL developer where a separate tab will show you the table data. So for now, I'll close it. So let us click on countries and this will open the countries table over here. Now you can see right now we are <coughs> we are looking at the columns inside the countries table. You can see there are three columns, uh, country ID, country name, and region ID. And we can also see the data type, uh, whether it is nullable or not, what is the default data, column ID, and are there any comments on the columns. Now, if you move along with these tabs, you will get more details about the same table. So if you get inside the data, this is where you see the exact data inside the table. Can you see it? So we have these row IDs, we have country ID, country name, and region ID. And if you click on this, uh, this arrow, I think if you double click on this arrow, this will sort your data, right? So if I double click once again, now you can see it is uh, in the reverse sort order. It starts with Z and then goes back to A. And if you just double click again, it will sort it from A to Z. So the same way you can double click on any column to sort the data in whatever order you want, right? So that's the simple way to sort the data. The next most important tab that you'll be using is constraints. So this is where all the table level constraints will be listed. Now you can see uh, we have three constraints over here. We have primary key. Um, this is country C I D P K. And then we have a check constraint that is checking whether the country ID is not null, because if you send a country ID with null data, it won't accept the record. And we have a foreign key that is connected to, uh, the regions table. You can see, which is owned by the same schema HR and which is connecting onto the regions table. 
So in these constraints, let's take you want to edit a constraint, you can click on this button that will help you to edit the constraint. And this actually opens another dialog box for you to edit the constraints. Now over here, you can see the columns and on the left hand side you you will have to click on the constraints again and this is where you will see all the constraints and this is the place exactly where you can actually edit the constraints delete or add more constraints to a table so right now we are not adding or making any changes to our tables because I think we'll be creating a new table in our next lecture for now you are just navigating and understanding how to use the SQL developer right so we'll cancel this one so this way we have a lot of other tabs over here that will help you understand what are the grants, stats, triggers, flashback, dependencies, details, partitions. So this is one way to navigate or view inside a table. So you can close this one directly from here. And then we are back onto the our SQL worksheet where we are querying the HR schema on the test TB database. Now over here, if you click on this plus button, what happens? If you observe, we can see the column names inside the table. The same thing goes with jobs. So if you click on this plus button, I can see the column names inside the jobs table. Now you might have a question like, Arun, okay, this is fine. We are able to navigate the tables via the GUI interface provided by the SQL developer. How do we query a table? It's very simple. So in this SQL worksheet, this is your area where you can write queries. So let me query the jobs table. So just write your query, select star from jobs, and then give semicolon. Now what you need to do is whatever query you are executing, you need to highlight it. This is the most important thing with SQL developer. And then click on this run button. So when you click on this run button, your SQL query has been run and this is your result area. Can you see query result? And this is where it is displaying the entire jobs table. Now, if you want to run another query, for example, select job ID and job underscore title from jobs. And if I want to run the second query what I need to do is highlight the second query and either you can click on this button or you can press control F5 like the F5 function key on your keyboard and it will execute the query oh what did I do did I press something wrong okay it says the SQL statement did not end properly let us run it this way Oh, I think I made a mistake over there. So uh, what it says, control enter. Let me hit the control enter. Oh yes, the control enter works. I think the in, in the previous versions, uh, FI used to work. I don't know why it's not working now. Now it says like control enter. So on my Windows machine, if I even press control enter, it does work. So you guys can use it. Great, now what happens when you don't highlight a query? Let's take, I, I'm not highlighting uh, any of the queries and if I click on this button, now understand what happens. See, I'm running. Do you see anything? What's the difference? So let me close this one, let me close this one and let me click on the run button. So what will happen is none of the queries will run. You can see it, even though we have a couple of queries. So if you think like, uh, if I click on this uh, run button, it will run the last entered query, no. It won't enter, uh, sorry, it won't run the last query and never highlight the entire worksheet like control A. Sometimes um, you have some delete queries in this session, you have some update queries and suddenly you want to execute something, you press control A and click on this button, gone. So don't do those kind of stuff. Be very careful when you work with SQL developer. The query that you want to run, highlight it, click on the run button, very simple. Now at this stage, I want to run the first query. I can just highlight it, run this one. And you can see now it will be querying the jobs table, the complete jobs table, right? Now, one small thing that I forgot to mention you, on any table, 
whether it is like the query result or whether you are looking at any table let's go to locations table and then let's get inside the data and now we have the locations table right if you want to filter the data let's take I want to filter the country ID so if you take your mouse you see this filter word filter button click on this button and then this will allow you to filter the data so I want to see all the records which belong to this country ID IT and then hit enter so now you can see your data is filtered so the same way you can actually add a city as well so, so I want people where the country ID is IT that is I think Italy and then the city name is Rome and we see there is only one record great so now if you want to remove a filter just click on this one double click on this name and it will remove the filter once again go here uh, you won't be able to delete this one but rather than that you see this one remove just double click on this remove and it will remove the filter so that's one good idea in order to filter the data when you're looking at the tables the same way if you go to this SQL query output if you go over here you see this filter button now I want to say that uh, all the people who are earning uh, is less than 5000 bucks and let me hit enter so these are the people who are earning less than five five thousand dollars or maybe rupees i don't know what currency they are using so <clears throat> this is like very simple way to filter the data rather than you know you're writing queries with where conditions and all so this is very easy and simple to use so what you can do is you see this remove just double click this remove and the filter will be removed so you can technically filter anything like mm, it's not necessary uh, like you have to give a number over here you can give greater than less than and all those conditions over here in the filter and it does work right guys so now tables are done and then the same way you view the views wow that's so rhyming so you view the views by clicking on this plus button the same way you can check all the indexes inside this schema so in this lecture we have covered like how do we navigate the different database objects inside the database we have seen how to open the tables and view the data inside the tables we understood about how to run the SQL queries in the SQL worksheet we have understood about how to filter the data using the filter option available within the SQL developer Great guys, so with this I would conclude this lecture and I will see you in the next lecture.